Hi everyone, thanks for checking out the video. So today's video is six figures a month. Six figures a month is when I choose the top six figures that I have acquired in any given month, this month being August 2022, and I show you what I got and explain why I got it and why I like it. So uh, getting right into it, first figure that I want to show for this month is the IQO 1936 Tokyo Japanese Imperial Soldier. Uh, for those of you who don't know, IQO tends to make a lot of Japanese uh, figures. Let me get this guy out of the way a little bit, push him over. They tend to make Japanese figures, and this guy is, not going to lie, not a great figure. Um, you have to assemble most of the clothing for those of you who get World War II or military figures. You know exactly what I'm talking about. They don't come assembled. You have to assemble them. Um, I did my best. My best wasn't very good, but it's okay. So the figure, uh, the hands themselves, the hands are pretty terrible. Um, they just sort of hang there in, in essence. I don't think you can put any kind of weight on them. Um, I haven't really tried only because when I put the hands on and I took hands off and put other hands on, it felt like each hand was ready to fall off. So uh, I can't recommend the figure for the hands. The body itself is, I would say, mediocre. Uh, the, head, the head sculpt's decent. Um, the clothing, the material is pretty good. Um, it's a nice figure. So for those of you who don't know, um, 1936, there was an incident known as the February 26th incident in which um, Japanese Imperial Army um, soldiers tried to overthrow the government. They ended up killing um, some former prime ministers, but they weren't able to kill the current prime minister. Um, their, their plan had failed and many of them were either executed or imprisoned. So this figure represents that incident. Uh, I I tend to collect World War II figures. I get a lot of face pool and DID figures, um, but they don't make Japanese figures, uh, Japanese soldiers. You can get Germans, you can get Americans, you can get British. It's kind of hard getting Japanese soldiers, so IQO tends to make them. Um, and so you're kind of stuck with what you can get. Now, as I said, the body itself is not great. The hands suck. Um, but the figure itself, as a whole, what you're looking at aesthetically, it's a really nice figure. So just taking off the gun, um, the bayonet, it's removable. You can take it off. There's a bolt action gun. Gun is nice. Um, feels like wood. I'm not gonna say it is, but it feels like it. What do I know? I don't know. Um, the backpack, ooh, he's ready to fall over. The backpack uh, is a nice material. It's very nice. Um, this piece here was supposed to fasten over here, over here, um, but it doesn't reach there. And if you do do it, it kind of goes over the chin, which is not how it's supposed to look, at least in the promotional pictures. So that's a little bit disappointing. Um, but other than that, I mean, if you just, if you want to have this guy in your background, if, you know, you just, you'd want something representing Imperial Japan, it's a, it's a pretty decent figure. Um, so the price point is not too bad. So, um, I like the way it looks. I don't like the way it feels, if you can understand that. Um, but either way, I do like it. And I've been wanting an Imperial Japanese soldier in my collection for a long time. 
uh, I got this one and you know he's, he, I would give this figure maybe a six and a half out of ten in terms of a grade and that's almost entirely on the clothing and just the visual representation so if you collect military figures um if you collect japanese figures this is probably a nice figure that you either have or are planning on getting um i think big bad toy store isn't scheduled to get this figure in until maybe next month not next month maybe october or november um so just be warned if if what you want is this representation you'll be happy if not if you want something more if you want something that you can kind of put in combat combat diorama you'll probably be disappointed um, i have the bendable hands with the gloves on them um, it i think the look was a little bit better with the gloves on for what I was displaying it as with the gun kind of in attention. So that's why I have the gloves, but he comes with um, regular hands as well. So moving that over to the side, our next figure is Kim Jong-un. What? Kim Jong-un? Why do you have a Kim Jong-un? Well, whenever a world leader is made into one sixth, I, I tend to want to buy it um, and this guy I'd been wanting one I'm gonna admit for a while and finally the pieces all kind of came together so this is this is essentially a kit bash um, so the head sculpt is from a company called water bear and they have put out I believe they put out another Kim Jong-un head sculpt years ago which i didn't get um it wasn't on my radar at the time but i want to get it now which is a cool head sculpt you can look it up if you want um but this one is nice the glasses fit really really well which is not something that you can say for one six figures the head sculpt's really great the details in the hair and the back of the head are pretty great and then the clothing comes from Water Bear. So Nader Bear, Water Bear. Or maybe I have it reversed. I might have it reversed. Either way, um, both companies sound alike, so they're probably the same company. Are they? I, I don't know. Is it more than likely? Yeah. Um, so you can see he's kind of wearing that kind of standard communist chinese north korean gear um so you have that white shirt with the button-up um jacket um comes with pants i think it comes with a belt is he wearing a belt um maybe not maybe not i don't know uh, i don't remember uh comes with a pair of shoes but the body you have to get separate. So that's three separate things coming together. The body is the world box kind of overweight fat body that a lot of people were buying for Endgame Thor, Fat Thor. Um, for those of you who picked it up, it's a heavy body. It's a very, very heavy body. So this guy has a lot of weight to it, which is why I have it on the, um, on the stand. It's a nice figure. I initially wanted it because I saw that there's a Donald Trump figure that was announced that I want to pick up. I have the um, I have the Joe Biden head sculpts. I haven't put it on a figure yet, but I have the head sculpt that um, that came out last year, which is a really nice head sculpt. Um, so I want to get a Donald Trump one as well. Um, a company I don't remember off the top of my head had announced a Trump um, my my vendor the 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 company the guy that I'm buying from I've asked them you know what's going on with it all they've told me is it's it's still scheduled to come out so um, we'll see but um, I like this figure I think it's cool it's different you know some of you might not like the guy um, but 
you know, there's a lot of possibilities with displays when you have something like this. So this is the Kim Jong-un um, kit bash, essentially. And it is one of my top six figures for the month. Moving along, now we're getting into Star Wars. And this is the Luke Snowspeeder um, by Hot Toys. Um, it represents Luke from The Empire Strikes Back during the Battle of Hoth. Um, it comes with a regular blade, comes with a kind of motion blade. You can remove the blade, just have the lightsaber. You can attach it to his um, his belt. The jacket is really weathered, which is cool, but it's very, very thin. The front of the jumpsuit legs is weathered, but the back is basically not. So that's a bit weird if you're turning it around in any way. Um, I guess this is the grappling gun that he uses to get to the top of the ad at during the fight. Yeah, I said ad at. Um, comes with his gun. The helmet is removable. Um, comes in, I, I think it's two pieces. Um, the visor goes up and down. You can, you can take that up or down depending on what you want to look at. Um, for the head, head display, the head sculpt. So it's a really cool figure. I love Luke. Luke, everybody loves Han. I love Luke. Luke's my guy. Um, and so I picked this up, waiting for the price to go down a little bit. It did, so I picked him up. Um, very happy. I have the Sideshow X-Wing Fighter Luke from back in the day, and I have them both kind of displayed together. So um, that Sideshow figure, I, I don't know what it's going for these days, but it must be up there. It's a pretty decent figure. The head sculpt's pretty good it's not great it's pretty good but when you have the helmet on it looks pretty good um you can't really go wrong with a helmet right it, it hides most of the face you just really seeing the mouth um but this is a really good figure um i have them next to each other and i think they go really well they complement each other so this is my it's kind of bent back a little bit this is my luke x x wing this is my luke snow speeder from the Empire Strikes Back, one of my top figures for the month of August. Now, here we have the Mafex Boba Fett. Not sure how well you can see, but this figure is fantastic. It kills everything else that's Boba Fett that's ever come out in this scale. Black Series can't touch it. Figure arts can't touch it. Nothing can touch it. It is a fantastic figure. Um, the weathering on the figure is great. The articulation is pretty good, if not great. It's a really, really nice figure. I didn't get it when it originally came out. Mafex wasn't really um, knocking it out of the ballpark, so to speak. So I passed on this one. This is the Return of the Jedi one, by the way. The, the Mafex Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. Um, so I passed on this one and the Empire Strikes Back version. They quickly sold out and the prices skyrocketed to what? $300 a piece. But they did the reissue and I jumped on it and this was like 40 bucks. It was under 5,000 yen. So I picked it up. Now I chose this one to show rather than the Empire Strikes Back one because I'm not going to show basically the same figure. Um, but I like the I like the way this figure looks more than the Empire Strikes Back one. I like the Empire Strikes Back gun more, um, but in terms of the costume, I think I like Jedi a bit more. If you don't know the difference, uh, pick both of them up. Pick up both figures, take a look at them, and you'll see exactly where the differences are. People say, well, there's no difference. There's a lot of difference. Um, you just have to take a look at it. Some things are very apparent, some things are not so apparent. 
So I have this guy. This guy is pretty cool. Picked him up at the beginning of the month. I think it released in July, but I picked it up at the beginning of August. So it makes my top six, six figures a month for the month of August. Now I'm going to keep it here as I bring in my other figure. You can see the height on the Mafex IG-11. The height between the two is pretty good. I know the Hasbro one, um, IG-11 that came out already, is not very good. I haven't compared, I'll move this over here, um, I haven't compared this Mafex IG-11 to the Figuarts IG-11 yet. I do have it. Um, I haven't compared the two simply because I just, I haven't had time. Um, but looking at this figure, it's, it doesn't stand very well. I don't remember exactly how the Figuarts stands, um, but this one I think stands even worse. So um, it comes with his bandolier, it comes with the Grogu that you can attach. It also comes with a serving tray and um, some cups and you know, a bottle. Now, if you're trying to hold that tray and put the cups and the, and the, and the bottle on it, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world. You can do it, but just the slightest vibration or bump, that figure will topple over and those small pieces will scatter. So, I mean, nobody out there has, has been immune from that, right? Something dropping with pieces that scatter. Sometimes you find them, sometimes you never find them. They just kind of disappear into another dimension. This guy is guilty of easily being knocked over. Now I have the guns. Let me move this one a little bit back like that. I have the guns spaced like this because it helps balance the figure out. Having the bigger gun in the back because I have Grogu in the front and then the other gun kind of over Grogu is kind of centering, um, centering the balance. So. This particular figure, it's very cool. It's very nice. It, it basically does most or or all of what the Figure Arts one does. It comes with the thermal detonator. Um, comes with the two guns, but it does come with the serving tray, which the Figure Arts one does not. And it comes with the Grogu already, which the Figure Arts one, if I remember correctly, does not. I think the Figure Arts one only comes with the carrying um, case, the bag. So it's a nice figure. Um, I have put most of my... Ooh, it's ready to fall over again. I have put most of my 1 12th scale figures into storage. I only have a few out, this being one, Boba Fett being another. Um, simply because I don't have a lot... I don't have a lot of... Um, I don't have a lot of space. And so... Um, you know, when you don't have a lot of space, you have to sort of prioritize things. And I prioritize my 1 6 figures more than my 1 12 figures. So my 1 12 figures have been put into a bunch of containers. I do like my 1 12 figures, but I've started getting more into the G.I. Joe classified line. And as they drop more and more and the quality and the look of those gets better. Um, I am probably going to revisit taking out my 112 stuff um, simply because I like the Joe stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff that I could do with the Joes. Um, so if I'm going to do the 112 scale Joes, I might as well take out the other ones as well and kind of mix it up and, and match it. Either way, getting back to this, the IG-11, it's a good figure. Um, I don't know what you're paying for this in the States. It was moderately expensive here, especially for the 112 scale. So uh, if you have the Figure Arts one, I would say pass on this one. Just keep the Figure Arts one because I, as I said, I don't think they're that different. Again, I haven't done the comparison, but um, nothing is really standing out to me. So if you have the Figure Arts one, Keep it. If you have the Black Series one, 
you can either upgrade or just wait for hopefully Hasbro to put out a better version. Um, that being said, the quality of what Hasbro puts out does not compare to Mafex. So um, the plastic is better, the articulation is better, the paint apps are better. So it's up to you. How, how much do you want a better representation of IG-11 in your collection? I like it. He's in mine. So one, two, three, four, five, and six figures a month. We have the Hot Toys Arena Boba Fett. This one is a bit of a controversial figure. Um, not controversial in the figure itself, but controversial in how people were able or not able to obtain it. Sideshow, which distributes to North America and other places, really screwed up this figure's rollout. They allowed people to purchase, I think it was six at a time, and I think it was no money down or free shipping or both, uh, something crazy like that. So it sold out in a day. They really should have limited it to one or when they made their mistake, canceled some of the orders and allowed people who ordered six to maybe get two. Just to allow more people to get it. A lot of people missed out on this particular figure. Um, I'm in Japan. Toy Sapiens sells this. Toy Sapiens has not sold out of this. They still have it. They are limiting people to one, um, one purchase per um, customer. I had a friend pick me up another one, so I have two. Um, this figure is, it's pretty cool. Just talking about the figure. Um, it's all black. Basically the normal standard Boba Fett. Um, the booster in the back, the the rocket pack has been painted chrome, that black chrome. Comes with two blasters. Everything is either black chrome or black um, matte colors. Um, comes with this kind of gladi gladiator style axe, spear, pick, whatever you want to call it, which is nice. Um, the Wookiee scalps are black as well, which I don't, I don't understand that. I don't know why they had to change color, but either way, it was a, it was a fairly easy, um, move on, on Hot Toys part to just take an existing Boba Fett and color it. And now you have a new figure. So for those of you who don't know, this is based on a comic book, um, Arena Boba Fett. Boba Fett had to go incognito um, between Empire and Jedi on his way to Jabba's palace. I don't remember the specifics of the story. It's been a long time, but he had a, he, he painted himself black or, or something to that effect and had a fight in order to survive. Um, the comic was okay, um, but it's interesting that both Hot Toys and, and Hasbro both released this character, Arena Boba Fett, at the same time. What are the odds of that? So it's pretty safe to say that Disney sent out a memo and said, basically, you guys need to make this figure. We want this figure made. Hook it up. Um, now hot toys i don't know i mean i've heard i've heard varying um numbers i don't know what to tell you but they probably just didn't make a lot of this because they weren't really sure it would sell um it obviously did sell and when something is low numbers and scarce that obviously helps sales people want it they don't want to miss out so um this figure sold out I think it's sold out everywhere except Japan. So this Friday is the uh, Toy Sapiens Jump to Hyperspace uh, event at all of their stores in Japan, actually, um, which is pretty cool. I'll be going on Friday. Um, I'm, I'm going to guess that this figure will be on the shelf 
available at retail to pick up. I already got one, I already got two, I don't need another one. Um, it's a good figure. The prices that people were paying on, on eBay, upwards of $1,000 for this figure, this is not a $1,000 figure in any way, shape, or form. It's a cool figure. Um, is it double retail? Yeah, probably. You know, when things sell out and they become scarce and you really want it, would you pay double retail for this? Yeah, maybe. Would you pay $1,000 for this? No. No. Unless you are a hardcore Boba Fett collector um, or you are a Star Wars completist, unless you're one of those two, I don't see anyone justifying the price um, that is currently um, and was being seen on, on um, the auctions online. So it's a very nice figure. It's a very cool figure. I don't think it's worth what it's going for now, but I am very glad that I got it. I have the Sideshow um, prototype white Boba Fett from years ago. I think that was sold oh, maybe 10 years ago at this point. Um, I'll probably display them together. You know, the black and the white. That might be an interesting um, dichotomy or contrast. So this is my last, my s number six of my six figures a month. I actually got it today, so I'm pretty happy. I played around with it a little bit, looked at it. Uh, fingerprints don't stick. For those of you worried about using gloves, don't worry about it. Um, it's a good figure. So I'll just move it over there. So that's it. Um, please let me know in the comments. What do you think? Which figures did you like? Which figures do you have? Which figures are you potentially looking to get? Uh, the point of this particular video is not really to say, hey, this is what I got. You know, that's not really what I'm doing. Um, the point is to kind of showcase different figures. We have different scales, we have different makers, um, sort of a kit bash. I, I tend to do one kit bash a month, usually. Sometimes I don't. Um, you know, the IQO figure. How many out there collect military? How many out there even knew that this was something? Same with the Kim Jong-un. How many people knew that? Not everybody does. Um, some of these things kind of fly under the radar and, and sometimes people just miss the announcements and when you miss the announcements for these kind of not hot toys figures sometimes they just pass you by so i like to share what i got i like to share my opinions on what i got um and i and i like in the comments if you could you know share what you think are there any figures that you picked up this month that you recommend it's about, you know, understanding and helping each other and, and just kind of sharing the hobby together. So um, thanks for watching the video. I appreciate it as always. So if you could like the video, I'd appreciate it. If you could subscribe, I'd appreciate that as well. So uh, I'll see you hopefully this weekend with the Toy Sapiens Jump to Hyperspace.